episode 16 title to be determined but that's all right we got some pretty cool conversations coming your way we are going to be talking about the new civil war movie the new fallout show on amazon which is fucking great that civil war movie was pretty good too kind of weird vibes in my opinion the chaos in the middle fucking east um and then kim reynolds anti-immigration bill however how all of these things connect together why they're important and that is it uh let's go ahead and start off with the civil war movie what do you think about that uh i liked it i i didn't really like the ending though it was started out pretty good um i liked the way that they made First of all, what it spoiler alert uh, to whoever has that hasn't watched it, but I really think that it's a good movie to kind of to like keep people aware, like of maybe why this movie kind of came out, and you know they I think they I think I can't remember who said this quote. Someone said that movies and and music changes generations, or at least you know mm -hmm. helps out. So. I like that it's out there mm. now, you know, whatever the plot was, it's, it was all right. I just didn't like the ending. Yeah. You know, it, it kind of felt, if you guys haven't seen leave the world behind on Netflix, that movie, which is also technically about a uh, dystopian society where the U S has collapsed, kind of gave me the same vibes, the same vibes. Um, that that fucking music that they play in these weird situations it just makes i don't know for, for for me that movie gave me a weird vibe i don't know if it's just maybe because i i wouldn't like to see a broken america but to what you were saying you're right you know people should watch that movie to understand what the risks what the risks are and how um and you know what just to stay united you know uh, you know, we have so much things going on outside of the U.S. And a lot of the times we get caught up in the conflicts, which is just society, societal conflicts, you know, between the left and right, conservatives, liberals, blah, 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 blah. And we lose picture of that and we kind of think of ourselves as different. But as long as you're here in America, living in America, you're planning on raising your kids here in America and you want the best for America, we're all American. But yeah, it gave me weird vibes though. Uh, I I don't know. I to be honest, not to seem so pessimistic or whatever, but I didn't see something that I couldn't see happen, especially now, hmm. you know. And to as why I was reading this book, House of a War Start, by Barbara, uh, by Br Barbara Walter, she kind of explains what um how civil war starts and actually how to end them and gives you actually examples of everywhere around the world um to to how just to avoid them or how they lead up to the civil war actually breaking mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. and you know we've already had a civil war in the united states and that was because of rising tensions between two sides and i don't know if it's just me and one of the reasons why I kind of stepped away from politics is because it just, it's kind of, it makes me unhappy. But right now, the atmosphere that me personally is that we're a divided nation. And I don't think it's just me. I think it's all over the country. I think everybody feels the, that, that, that way as well. But to that, how civil wars start, I mean, it's as simple as two sides. And it's as simple as differing views, extreme differing views. Well, uh, y yes, I I'd say yes and no, because a lot of people think that civil wars might start because of uh, kind of like your background as in like being poor or the more, you know, the ones that are that don't have much that they would revolt against the rich and, and, uh, and you know, the government, which that was the case back 
probably a hundred years ago with those civil wars, but now it's more ethnical religion and cultural views uh, that lead up to, to, to civil wars. And that's what Barbara talks about. She talks about that. The ones that actually started are extremist groups, not the poor or not the ones that, you know, are in need. Mm. It's extremist groups, whether it's from the right, from the left. Now, she claims a lot. I don't know. I think she she kind of puts. I don't know. She's kind of talks shit about the right. I, maybe it just sounds like that because because you know it probably doesn't fit my narrative or um you know maybe mm -hmm. I'm just trying to be too like okay why didn't you bring this up but but um but it's supposedly more more of the right wing that will start the the. Mm a civil war or or attacks or whatever mm. and she actually uh she was she joined this thing called um the pin let me get it right let me get it right hold up uh the political instability task force she joined it it's a group of academics and and analysts uh, that the CIA actually created the program back like in 94 or whatever. And then she was asked to, to join it and to, to, to basically be aware of, of countries that are close to, or, you know, or have political unrest in, mm -hmm. in, you know, in mm -hmm. their country. And, um, and they score them, they score them by, uh, let me see. Um, like I said, I didn't really want to go into this cause you know, it's just a lot of, you know, notes and I, I don't know, I kind of wanted to just wing yeah. it yeah, 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 yeah. because this is kind of the civil war actually should be a thing to take in consideration with, with everything, because there's actually more civil wars now in the, in modern history than there ever was in, in the world, which is kind of, that's fucking crazy. Kind of crazy, you know? No, so yeah, it's fucking crazy. Especially when you consider how we destabilized the Middle East and who was kind of in charge of that, the CIA, mm -hmm. um, and and all this different types of guerrilla warfare and and whatnot. One of the things in the Civil War movie, and you're right. Spoiler alert. That is crazy. And the division in what you were saying, why civil wars are kind of caused now with, you know, ethical views, religious views and all these things was a popular scene that you guys, it was actually uh, in the trailer. And, and I've actually, the movie just came out. What was it on Friday or Saturday? Yeah. Something like that. Uh, Friday, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, it was, what kind of American are you? And this guy was, this guy was shooting Anybody that was not native to America, like if you looked not American, he was shooting you. Long story short, he was just he was killing he was killing immigrants, and and then you had people like that, and then you had the federal government or people like that, which were those extreme extremist groups, and then you had the actual federal government with the federal with the executive chief, the president. And then you had a different faction, which was Western forces, which was the majority of of the opposing of the opposing military, opposing the federal government. It was just kind of crazy to see that and to kind of understand how that is kind of how things are going to happen, you know? Yeah. Um, it, if it does. Yeah. One of the things that um, she, she, I I just did uh, some quick you know research and stuff and read most of her book, but didn't get to the best part. But she talks about how civil wars would look like, and that, actually that movie depiction is pretty really really good because it wouldn't look like how you know North versus South back in what the eighteen hundreds, mm. and it would look like more militia little groups, mm. you know, controlling an area and whoever's trying to you know be the government in power would actually play out or you know help these little militias in order to attack mm. um this one or the ones that are too radical or whatever which that's how all those civil wars look like in the middle east and in 
in all those different parts of the country, you know, Africa and whatnot, you know, the government that has the power and the and the sources will, you know, uh, play with those little militia groups in order to, you know, basically kind of keep their hands clean in a way, kind of like something that yeah. Iran likes to do, kind of yeah. like that, basically. Huh, that that That's pretty cool. Yeah, that, that, I'm telling you, that fucking movie is great information or great depiction of a dystopian future. That, you know, it's sad to say that I, I don't, how you were saying to not to be pessimistic, but it's something that could very well happen, especially when we have all these events occurring in the Middle East. I mean, Iran just declared war on Israel. Um, Putin is backing Iran. If the United States attacks Iran on Iranian soil, the Russians will retaliate against the United States. And you have all of this conflict. First of all, this administration is garbage. I, I'm hoping that all of you that voted for this administration is realizing how bad of a decision can affect. And it's very important to make a decision based off of facts and stats and kind of take that emotion out of the equation because it gets us in situations like this. And uh, what's his name? Which is he's a fucking doobie too. Well, let's let's get to first. I don't. I don't. I, are you gonna bring that up? No. Go, go, would you, go ahead. I would rather. I would rather. Uh, before getting to that, talk. I, I wasn't gonna get to this. Talk. Oh, okay, okay. Go ahead. Not go ahead. to this talk. Sorry. Go ahead. But and then this fucking doobie by the name of John Kirby, which is the if you guys don't know, he's the White House National Security Communications Advisor. Uh, basically, sees uh, overseas conflicts. He's a he's a joke. Yeah, he's the one that said that when they, I, I don't know, you might fucking go over this, but he's the one that said that when they uh, released or unfroze all those billions of dollars to Iran, that they were going to keep track of all the tra transactions. And then three months later or two months later, he was like, oh, I don't know what they, they a reporter asked him about a transition or of a, of a transaction. And he's like, he literally goes like this. Like, I don't, oh, uh, yeah, I wouldn't be able to tell you that. I'll have to get back to you like this. Yeah. Yeah. I hope fu I'm going to post, put, put, put the video up. Yeah, that guy's a fucking joke. I mean, this entire administration is, but. So, uh, as of about an hour ago, um, he went on NBC with a reporter speaking about, you know, the Middle East and Iranian conflict with Israel now. And long story short, the United States, according to Joe Biden, does not want a war. We are still going to support Israel, I'm assuming, in financial aid, which for all of you broke people out there that can't afford houses or that are struggling because the fucking market is just fucking crazy in the United States right now. I'm part Thank of the, the proxy I'm, wars. Yeah, Thank I, the proxy I'm wars. part of that. The United States government does not have money for us. They don't have money to help our poor, to help our homeless, to help our veterans, to... They don't have money for us, but they have money for wars. So go ahead and thank this administration for that. And just go ahead and thank the government. For some reason, it's always a money issue when it comes to Americans. But as soon as there's a war, all right. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. Look at that. I just pulled a couple billion out of my ass. Mm -hmm. And according to that, now, I'm not sure about you, Pedro, but I have so much confidence in what he also said during this interview. He said that Joe Biden is personally handling the diplomatics with this conflict with Israel and Iranian. Joe Biden is personally with a handling fucking ice cream in his fucking hand or what? So I'm so confident in Joe Biden because he has the best memory and he is, you know, one of the best presidents that we've had. So I'm super confident about that. If you guys didn't take that, I was joking. Joe <laughs> Biden is garbage. This entire administration is garbage. So there's that. And what we have, what we have is, oh, you know what, Peter? You sent me that on, on Twitter. What was it? So, hold up. I'll pull it up right now. So, what we have is a timeline of events. This is... Uh, by Bricks. Yeah. So, by Bricks. Timeline of events. 
Israel attacks Iranian embassy in Syria, killing 16 people, including top officials. So something that Israel started. Iran raids and successfully seizes Israeli-linked container ship. Iran retaliates. Israel shuts down schools nationwide, puts military on full alert amid Iran threat. Well, new, you know, you attack them, you're going to get hit back. Iran officially launches attack on Israel using dozens of drone. Iran reportedly launches cruise missiles at Israel. Yemen launches drone attacks on Israel. Iran, this is from Iranian media reports. Israel prime minister says, do not expect mercy to be shown to any Iranian. Jordan says they will intercept all all drones and missiles that pass through airspaces towards Israel. Iraq's Khatib Hezbollah declares the start of operations against Israel. Iran supreme leaders say the militia's Zionist regime will be punished. U.S. officials believe Iran is set to launch up to 500 drones and missiles from Iran, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, and Yemen. American and British fighter jets are intercepting Iranian drones launched at Israel. Dozens of missiles reported launched from southern Lebanon towards Israel. And last night, which my brother will pull this footage up and put it in, last night we have a bunch of those drones and missile strikes towards Israel's and Israel's Iron Dome uh, defense was pulling through for them. (laughs) So why is this all connected? Because we have these immense conflicts going on over there. Iran is now officially involved. Russia is now could be officially involved in it as well, so long as the United States does not continue to fucking put their fucking... Uh, why the fuck is the United States involved in all this conflict? Like, And then not only that, but Iran threatens the United States saying that if we keep on supporting Israel, we will also be the next target. Now, where does this come in hand to... Our last episode, which was, is America failing us with immigration policy? Last two episodes, but yeah. Yeah, with uh, immigration policy. We have fucking terrorists in our country that this administration let, let, let pass through. Fact. If the United States keeps on pushing this agenda to provide aid to Israel, which Israel does not give a fuck about the advice that United States is giving to them. Israel's launch on Israel's launch on Syria, killing the, you know, Iranian officials, mm-hmm. they did not talk to the United States about it. It's so, one of those things that I think Netanyahu is he trying to provoke something, you know? I know this guy is not the cred- most credible guy on the internet, but Alex Jones called it I don't know, some 20 years ago, 15 Why years he ago. The most credible. He's gotten everything besides a few things, maybe a few things wrong. And that's only because Pe- people make mistakes, you know? And he calls that World War III will be caused because of Israel, which looks like that prophecy is going to be close to being complete. Not only that, but the thing that they asked this joke, uh, this jokester John Kirby on NBC's. What is the red line? What line has to be... What's the red line? If Iran attacks the United States, what is the red line to provocation for war? The thing is, Americans don't want war because Americans don't believe... They don't They don't believe we should be involved in the Israel versus Palestine conflicts. Americans now see that fucking... The beggar Zolinsky, you know... Their officials are driving Bugattis. Their officials, they're, they're taking the money. I'm not sure if you know, but um, generals from Ukraine, mm-hmm. all that money is lost. Most of it is lost. And it's going to their officials. They're driving fucking Lambos and Ferraris and shit like that. No. Americans don't want to fund these fucking wars when there's no fucking money for Americans. Yeah, this is... So this is what... Uh and kind of we're kind of getting all over the place but it but this is kind of where civil wars actually start where democracies are weak Mm. democracies are weak when the opposition when like us let's just say for us 
we kind of have some common sense. I don't give a fuck about emotions in the sense of, uh, you know, it, there's, it's funny because like all this shit that's happening right now, people are like, well, at least, you know, there's no mean tweets. At least there's no mean tweets. <laughs> you know, we're in wars, but at least there's no mean tweets because, oh, um, and I'm actually going to send you that video and I want you to play it. I, I want you to play right. it and hold up. But uh, fuck, what was I going to say? I was going to say something. No mean tweets. Oh, no. And this tweets. is why so War so starts. so everyone wasn't Trump the one that was supposed to start World War Three. Yeah. Wasn't he? What wasn't yeah. he the one that was no fucking wars, dude? Like, how much do you want to say? Like, and no conflicts, uh, no, no conflicts. conflicts. We the Abraham Accords, all this stuff. Like, man, we can even go through it. But just the narrative of. Trump is going to be bad. Oh, we already had four years of him. Oh, it's just everything of this is kind of baffling to me because it's like, dude, we are obviously see. Okay. And then there's, there's, there's one thing where us as Americans, I feel like there's a lot of Americans that don't even know about this or care about this or they're like, oh, was whatever, because that's how, that's what happens. Dude, so Barbara, we have an, we American has America has an ignorant society, if not the most ignorant society. Exactly because we care. We have too in much the entertainment. World. We have too much entertainment yeah. to keep us, you know. Yeah. So, so the fact that that when a democracy is weak, that is when civil wars will arise. So I, I repeated that, but um, I don't know, like. I fucking forgot what I was gonna say. I forgot what I was gonna say. No, it, it's it's all right. I mean, I'll, I'll ask you this, and I'm not sure why Americans are so. Actually, I I do know why because this is the greatest country in the world, and because of that, we get soft. Our society is soft. But I'll ask you this: a scenario that is likely to happen is this. First of all, an alliance with Israel that a lot of Americans don't want to support. Uh, because of, you know, the genocide with the Palestinian people and their civilians, um, which is how Hamas conducts their leadership. You know, they use them as human shields and all this stuff. Is the This is, Israeli conflict is going out of hand. Will it cause World War III? I'll, I'll ask you this. United States gets, gets involved because Iran is tired of the United States funding so much, uh, funding all this money to Israel. So they do what? A terrorist attack. Isn't that grounds for the United States to be involved? A terrorist attacks, hopefully not at the level of 9-11, but a terrorist attack to a very grave extent at, at American lives, at the cost of American lives. That's grounds for the United States to get involved. The question is, will Americans want to even get involved after we had the fiasco in Afghanistan when we left it? Well, that was because of Biden. But... After we have such a weak society... You know, our veterans, our our patriots that were in the military, they left. They they were fed up because they didn't want to be forced to take a vaccine. They were fed up because of that uh Afghan conflict. They're they're fed up. They're they're they left the military because of that. Do you really think that our soldiers, our brave soldiers that are patriotic want to go back over there? Not only that, who else are they gonna send? You really think that our soft society that's, oh, don't hurt my feelings. You really think they're going to fucking put up a fight? I'll tell you this. I am not going to a foreign land to fight some politician's fucking war. Oh, I support Israel. Get on a plane, go fight. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now, now, if it comes down to it, I'll stand my ground here in America and protect America. But I'm not, I'm not going nowhere and... The vibes are that Americans don't want that either. So why are we continuing to get involved into all these fucking stupid conflicts? Because we're not the ones that are benefiting benefiting from it. It's always the elites and the higher ups. They're the ones benefiting from it. The military mm -hmm. industrial complex. Nikki Haley. Uh, 
<laughs> that fucking rat. <laughs> Nikki Haley, fucking all these, you know, Chuck Schumer, mm. uh, all these fucks, you know, Nancy Pelosi, the greatest fucking inside trader ever. Uh, Dan than, Kershaw. Big, yeah. Dan Kershaw. Bigger than fucking Warren her. Buffett. Uh, you know, you want to fucking AOC. Fuck oh, it. oh my. <laughs> One of the best capitalists out there. For you guys that don't know those <laughs> names, we did not just name Democrats. We named Republicans alike because the reality of it is that that's what it seems like it is. These politicians are not listening to the American people. Fuck even Mike Johnson right now that just actually, uh, he had the vote that was going to pass it or not pass the FISA bill. And he he was just with, with the FISA bill, which the FISA bill is um, a bill that can spy on American citizens. Uh, not like, I think just temporarily, which mm -hmm. lasts, this one's gonna be two year a two year plan or some oh, shit. Which which was the bill that that's how they were to uh spy on Donald Trump and <laughs> Tucker and Alex. Listen to that guys. The government can spy on us. Don't worry though, it's only for two years. Mm -hmm. But they can spy on us. Um so you know that that um I think now I was trying to, now I figured out what I was trying to say. It's just, you know, you get so wrapped up into, a, you want to say a lot of things and mm -hmm. then you don't really know how to say them or what to say. So then you're just like, oh, I just, you know, anywho, um, the, that program that the CIA, could, you know, created, the only one that they couldn't, you know, spy on was Americans back in 19, whatever, 94, until probably the Patriot Act in after, after, you know, 9-11, which... You know, now looking at it, you know, at first, the the thing about democracy is that, well, reading into this book is that people are willing to lose their freedom in order to feel protected or mm -hmm. in order to feel safe or in order to feel like, you know, hey, you know, yeah, okay, I'll give up this. I'll give the, up this in order to know that I'm going to be good. And mm -hmm. that's what we did with the Patriot Act. Um. And I don't know, it, it just, this book just seems so good to what we're living in. And which, by the way, this was before the the second biggest, um, what, what would we call it? The second biggest attack on American soil, which was January 6th. <laughs> Anywho, this was before. So, like, you know, I can't say that, you know, she, she was, she's been doing this for 30 years. Yeah. And. Um, I'm going to keep bringing it up because it's a very fascinating book, especially around now, now, you know, the current it's, world. Yeah. Is going so on right now. I think I recommend that to everybody and I'm on the last three chapters, but she interviews a lot of people that were involved and this is what got me uh, that were involved in uh, parts of the world that had that civil wars broke out and mm. all of them didn't think that was going to happen until it happened. And that is what I feel like going on here in this country. Mm -hmm. We feel like us as Americans too, airing into beef. Safety's, bro, safety's beautiful here. Mm -hmm. Go on a fucking run later, F, you know, seven, ten miles, no bombs exploding me. And we take that for granted until it's taken away from us. And then it's too mm -hmm. fucking late. This is what I'm just trying to bring up. We take it for granted americans need to be prepared americans need to understand uh these conflicts and for the point that you made out you know it's not far from where we're currently sitting at right now and it makes sense like you know people are like you know just living their lives so worried about all these other things and then to what you're saying they're not prepared and it it happens from one day to the next just i'm, I'm sure that's how 9 11 was mm -hmm. people were just living their lives getting their little coffee there's one story that i that i uh, looked at this 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 woman was late to her job and she was going and she was like fuck i usually stop for a coffee i sh you know this time i'm gonna stop for it you know even though i'm late i'm still gonna stop for my coffee boom impact happens mm -hmm. Her being late and still stopping for her cup of coffee is what saved her life. 
And there's a lot of those stories too. And from one moment, life, life as usual, to a, an hour later, it's the worst attack on American soils. And next, you know, we launch a war in the Middle East and disable it. I'm just afraid that you know there will be that that there is and there there will be an attack here on American soil because you know no there will be with 100% certainty there is going to be an attack on America most likely on American soil whether it's an embassy whether it's a military base because we have them all over the world or whether it's here in America, there will be an attack on America. But why do, why do you say that? It's one of those things that all of this conflict that's going on, we're involved in two proxy wars, Ukraine and Russia. And then... <laughs> Ukraine and Russia. Or, uh, <laughs> yeah, Ukraine, U- Ukraine versus Russia and Israel versus yeah. Palestine. It, which, on a quick note, it's... It's uh, there's been sources that say that the reason why, um, Hamas attacked Israel is because Russia told Iran to do it to get the United States focused on something else other than just funding all that money to Ukraine. So we have this, we have the escalation of one of our greatest ally, Israel. It's one of our greatest ally. We we support them heavily. The United States supports Israel heavily. And you have all these terrorist groups, Hamas, Hezbollah, uh, you have Iran, you have all these other proxy wars that we don't even fucking talk about because we don't even know about them, that the United States is involved one way or another. Mm -hmm. We already destabilized the Middle East. That's a fact with Afghanistan and Iraq and all this stuff. And then we're we're going to, the United States is going to keep on funding. There is a bill that has not hit the house yet. Because um, our I th- um, fuck that that one guy. But maybe I'll pull up a picture. Maybe not. But there's a bill that has not hit the house on because the the speaker of the house is is holding it. Mike Johnson is is it him. Yeah. Be- because he's holding it with glasses. Yeah. Because he's holding it, and that bill is to what to send more money to not only the most recent affair going on, which send more money to to Israel. But to also send more money to Ukraine. Another fuck you Americans. No money for you guys though. It's not going to stop. It's only going to stop until Israel defeats Hamas. And takes complete control of Palestine. Or what? Now even if Israel defeats Hamas. Now they have Syria to deal with. Now they have Iran to deal with. So after they defeat Hamas. What's going to happen? Their war is going to continue with Iran and Syria. And then where is that going to lead? It's going to happen sooner or later. That's why I say that it's going to happen. 100% certainty. Whether it's now, later, whether one of those fucking terrorists that we know for a fact is in America. Now, do you have that same thought if Biden wasn't president? If Biden well, if Biden wasn't president, we would most likely not have any conflicts. But now, okay, the, the, so the, so so, do you think that uh, attack in American soil will happen after election or before? So, if we put on our conspiracy hats on, our tinfoil hats on, I mean, we for a lot of people we probably already do. <laughs> okay, because you know, like we're talking about real shit and not yeah. about LGBTQ shit. <laughs> Anywho. So if we put on our conspiracy, our tinfoil hats on, there's people out there. Um, PBD, Patrick Bateman had this guy on, I think, fucking a year and a half ago that said that he thinks that there's not even going to be an election. Because if you guys don't know, if the United States goes into war, that fucks with our election cycles, which would keep Joe Biden as the executive chief for to, you know, the elections will even the happen. War or something. Yeah, to play out the war. So that is just something that I don't know. I can see it happening. Um, you know, it's very likely that 9-11 was already some sort of an inside job. 
Uh, there's just so much things contradicting that. I don't see. I don't see that it would be a conspiracy to think that the United States will do something like that to keep this current administration in power to serve out this certain agenda of wars. I'm just trying to now. Now hold up. Sorry. Now hold up. So, so I guess to answer your question. I can see it happening before the election to keep this government in power. Mm -hmm. And I can see it happening after the election because of the millions of illegal aliens that have entered our borders, which are not the regular uh, South Americans looking for or Central Americans looking for financial mm -hmm. asylum or for, uh, you know, they're fleeing their country and stuff like that. It's not that usual. We have a tremendous amount of, of, of Chinese natives that were paid and that were giving instructions and that were giving special privileges to cross the Darien Gap and to get into California. And not only that, but we have so much Middle Eastern migration coming in through the border as well. So the thing is, it's going to happen regardless. And the thing is that it's, it's, you know, our borders, our borders are open. There's, so much nefarious things going through there. Drugs, terrorists. So, to answer your question, it doesn't matter if it's before or after. It's going to happen. Well, let's hope not. Let's hope not. And let's uh, hope for the best. And, I mean, the future is bright. I always think that... Let's hope for the best, but plan for the worst. I like that. I like that. Um, yeah, I don't... Fuck, man. It's just all kind of crazy. Um, I'll look for the video of, of Joe Biden, but I don't know. I just... Yeah, I think we 100% should go more deep into to, to civil war because I don't think... First of all, I'm not prepared. I'm, I want to finish this book and uh, then, you know, research some other type of civil wars. But uh, now... Uh, uh, by by the way, guys, this so, is just this is just a, a podcast because of uh, the current things going on. Like I said, affairs. like I said, the Civil War movie is very new. The Fallout show will bring it up here shortly. That's new. The chaos in the Middle East with Iran and Israel and Russia and all these things literally just happened last night, um, Sunday, April thirteen, and then. Uh, migration issue here native to Iowa just got passed April 10, uh, which is all very recent stuff. We're going to elaborate on all of these things in more in depth at a later time. Right now, we want to just bring awareness to our American folk. Now, I'm not sure if you know this, Pedro, but this conflict or sorry, you were going to say, do you still know what you were going to say? Or I'll continue. Let me go to the bathroom real quick. All right, we're back. Uh, so where are we at? Civil wars, uh, what could arise? Uh, one of the things that caught also my attention was um, now <clears throat> us that we whether have a conspiracy conspiratorial hat on or whatever. Uh, these uh, also what arises a civil war is uncertainty or i mean obviously political unrest but also the other side losing or thinking it's losing the power or you know in order to i guess bring the country back and i feel like i see a lot of this with this maga extremist thing too you know so what i was trying to say is like do we I'm trying to put ourselves into this whole concept of, I guess, CIA test or whatever, that are we on that side, you know? You know, because do you get what I'm trying to say or no? Yeah, kind of like are we part of that fucking extremist group? Basically. I mean, basically, because we, I mean, we're looking at how the fucking country is going and all these fucking political fucks. And, you know, we're against that, but I feel like we have that concrete evidence of why we're thinking that, you know? Yeah. And it's just like, 
I don't know. I I was thinking and I was thinking about if that really was. I don't know. I don't. I don't think I'm an extremist, but uh, pertaining to that, uh, you know, I, I don't think so at all. Well, pertaining to that, I mean, uh, like you were saying earlier, people thought Donald Trump was going to be the one that got us into war, and then when the campaign was Donald Trump versus Joe Biden, dude, I. The, the fucking post that was all up during, you know, when it was election week was, I know Joe Biden isn't the best one, but he's the lesser of two evils. <laughs> I remember it like it was yeah, fucking I yesterday. I've seen that one. It's the lesser of two evils. So you tell one. me what side would be wrong, you know? Mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of the same thing with this, you know? Use, use your lesser of two evils thing that you used last year to this one. Which one, which one is it? It's Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. He's the lesser of two evils. Yeah. You know, you might not like him who he is. You might not like what he stands for. But guess what? His policy better than this administration. Yeah. And also uh, hope. Hope has to do a lot with the civil wars where when the uh, one side feels like there's nothing that's going to change it besides maybe fucking violence. That's when civil war arises. And that's actually what kind of happened in. That's what has been always happening with Palestine and Israel. Mm -hmm. I mean, Israelis being fucked up to the Palestinians and Palestinians are like, fuck, bro. Like we lost hope. At least let's let's give the, let's give these terrorists fucking at least maybe they can help us, which that also is doesn't solve the fucking the plan, the, the problem. But, you know, it, it, it they're losing that hope. And I can understand that. But I'm not, obviously I'm not siding with anybody, you, you know. It, no, me, me neither. You know, it's literally America first and that's what it is. But Palestine lost two wars is the problem. You know, when you, when you say of it, like losing hope and stuff like this and, oh, Israel's uh, oppressing the Palestinians and stuff like that. They rebelled, they, you know, they revolted. They didn't like, you know, which part of it was British's fault. Mm -hmm. was part of it was yeah, the, the yeah, uk's fault yeah. that they gave they gave all this land to israel and diminished the land that palestine had so they said not nah, we want what we had they lost the war oh again lost the second war now we're in the third war between israel and palestine yeah which which i i, I see that part because obviously you know it's kind of a coincidence that all wars have been won by the good guys you know it's so mm. coincidental you know it's never ever happened but until you know but that also doesn't condemn fucking israel to just kill people innocently too though you know you get me so like i get where you're trying to say i get what you're trying to say but also it's like at what cost like israel's fucked up by doing that shit you know i would agree but it's like when we i guess i don't know i would agree but this is the thing that I'm telling you. We have to think critically, not emotionally. Mm -hmm, for sure. They're, they're at war is the mm -hmm. thing. You know, well, There's no winners and in war. <laughs> there's no winners in war and there's no good size in war. Nope. War is war. And yep. we refer to the basic law of nature, which is kill or be killed. Not only that, but you also forget that Hamas has embedded itself in its civilian population. Mm -hmm. So according to... This stat may be wrong because I didn't look it up. I, I didn't look it up for myself. It's just something that I've um, that I've picked up on uh, social media. But according to Hamas, there's been like thirty five or forty thousand civilians killed, but they don't they don't differentiate between what's a civilian and what's a Hamas uh, soldier. They don't differentiate. They put the two together. So, and there's this actually guy that went on Joe Rogan and talked about it, um, which he has a very good view on kind of, he doesn't side for Israel or Palestine. Yeah. He's kind of just oversees what, what the stats or facts are of the situation. And it's that Hamas has just embedded itself into, you know, they perfected the, they perfected that form of warfare of embedding itself into, into you know the civilization yeah i'm um, they also um, embedded they actually also always try to 
provoke, you know, Israel and in actually they even talks about fucking uh Hamas actually embedding like, you know, having just putting weapons in schools and in mm-hmm. houses and all this stuff so they can provoke basically Israeli forces, which like I said, I don't know much about that aspect of things and I really don't like talking about something that I am not, you know, that I haven't done my at least a little bit of searching up, but I what I do know is, you know, our problems we have here in America. And that's exactly why we shouldn't be involved mm-hmm. in all of these proxy yep. warfares. And there and I actually seen by this um um and, and this was a while ago by this uh soldier that was in Afghanistan saying that the and I, you know I even think Dan Kershaw is this is his stand which is he's a senator for Texas if I'm not mistaken his stance is that the way we protect America is to be is to you know have our foot in all of these doors you know to keep to keep them open that's how we protect America because that's how we gain intelligence I'm sure there's some truth to that to an extent but there's a there's a line that is crossed when we just are there for intelligence. And then when we're there to do co-ops, which the CIA is new fucking notorious for causing co-ops, you know, that's that's how ISIS was created. I, is, I think ISIS was created by fucking Barack Obama. Exactly. Which, if it, you fucking say that I'm crazy, literally look it up. Which, if you guys don't know, Barack Obama's uh, second name is. The porter in chief, and then his third name is bomber in chief because he was the one with the most drone, drone strikes. strikes yeah. yeah. Um. So so there's a there's you know there's that line that what happens when we do this and it gets us into the conflicts that are we that we that we're in it now and the enemies that we're creating. It's um I think who said maybe it was Andrew Schultz he said or maybe it wasn't but for every one Hamas or maybe it was Elon Musk it was, it's for, Elon Musk for every one hamas soldier that you kill how much do you create yeah you know speaking of barack obama isn't it crazy that between george bush barack joe biden and you know past presidents besides donald trump only because he wasn't involved in wars isn't it crazy that uh that they've killed so many civilians and destroyed so many places and they're we're not charged for it they're not uh in whether indicted for it. they don't get looked at they don't nothing and the president that's been you know the best in no you know political unrest well i guess no proxy wars has a fuck ton of indictments. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Isn't that fucking crazy? You know, and I, I, I'm again, I'm not a fucking MAGA guy. It's just like, let's look at what's, what's, what's out there, you know, just because he fucking talk shit. Yeah, I, I don't talk shit, bro. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's very clearly evident that there is a deep state and that mm-hmm. there is definitely an agenda being served. Not to say that both parties don't have agendas that they want to serve that's true that is. but you can definitely see that there is a plan to discredit donald trump and to and to you know to paint a bad picture for him in hopes that he does not get reelected. and that's the thing though it's not just donald trump look what's happening with fucking bobby kennedy jr yes like they're fucking him over with not even wanting to, you know, run against Joe Biden. Like, what? Like, this guy doesn't even... He's not even a Republican or Democrat, and he's like... The Democrats didn't want him. Yeah. That's why he went independent. So it's just like... That is another reason or another form of... That there's someone pulling the strings. Yeah, I would I would agree. Um, I would agree. I'll uh, pull up that pull up that uh, Joe Biden video so 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 the people can listen to this. Um, hold up, so the people can listen to. The... Should I? Does that look good or should I enter it full screen? Uh, just enter it full. Sh- uh, let me see. No, it's all right. My info don't pop up. All right, let me see. You can't put the full screen. All right, guys, look at this fucking dweeb. <laughs> <laughs> 
check that out. The world has changed because what Trump has done. And the American people, including independents and some Republicans, know how bad he is, know how much he's misrepresented, know how he's getting close to getting us in a war. I said, as the walls close in on this man, I'm worried he's going to get us to war in Iran. Unfortunately, I may have been right. The fact of the matter is, there's a lot at stake in this election. The world has changed because what Trump has done. And the American that? people, including independents and some Republicans, know how... Oh, look, uh, well, war with Iran is about to happen. Biden said it would be Trump who would do it. Turns out Biden did it himself. <laughs> or will do it himself. Yeah. It's, uh, like I said, like I said, um, I don't know when the time will happen when politicians will actually start listening to the people and... And also that, that, also do that, do that, um, the, the Mike Johnson one, just post that one too. That one's a fucking hilarious one. It's like, what, bro? Uh, here, hold up. Don't, don't pop the screen up yet. All right. Uh, the Mike Johnson one. Uh, fucking it. dweeb. Or not fucking, not Mike Johnson. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, uh, John, sorry. John, John, John Kirby. <laughs> Hold up, hold up. Right, we got to look at this fucking dweeb. Look at this fucking joke. All right. We'll be able to engage in oversight about where the money was going and for what purpose. If Iran tries to divert the funds, we'll take action and we'll lock them up again. And there will be sufficient oversight to make sure that the request is valid and that it's going through uh, uh, vendors who we, who we and the Qataris can trust will actually contract for the goods the medical equipment the food whatever it is the regime doesn't get to touch the money peter doesn't go to them they don't get to the they don't get to decide uh, <laughs> ultimate destination uh and uh and they have no direct access to it um john iran made two transactions withdrawing from the previously frozen funds in oman what were those transactions for i don't have the details on that jackie you're gonna have to let Watch. me get back to you on that the U.S. will have visibility. We'll be able to engage. <laughs> oh shit, what a bro. fucking joke. Um. Yeah, America has probably the dumbest politicians out there. Yeah, it's. <laughs> And just to think that that's the people that are running our country. Um, another thing is uh, on why this is such a dangerous time is, you know who has nuclear weapons? Israel. Both Israel and Iran. Both Israel and Iran have nuclear weapons and, you know... Israel is ruthless when it comes to their wars and we see we you know just look at the history and like I said war is war and there's no good or bad sides and the things that happen during war are inhumane but that's that's the way this world works and I would not I would not um put it past them that they wouldn't use them or that Iran wouldn't use him, you know. Iran's also shit. But that's just crazy. Which which is actually um if you guys haven't haven't seen it, the show on there's a show on Amazon called Fallout. It's based on a video game. It's and it depicts a future dystopian society of you know, one day life is normal then conflict is occurring and they get hit by america gets hit by nukes and then years later you have different societies you know there's underground there's underground people called the vaulters and they still live like normal with the regular american laws and you know they live like normal just living in bunkers and and vaults and then you have people that survived and it's just havoc and it's like, dude, we fucking, if nuclear war happens and the world gets hit by that and 
everybody starts sending them, I think that they that that show and that video game depicts it well as well. Like Civil War, if a Civil War happens, it depicts it well. Given that there's even anything left to salvage, which also comes to uh, my thought that I actually I'm glad I brought it up. You know that that Fallout and also uh, the Civil War. You know that I think the United States government has uh, a budget on Hollywood films, or at least films mm-hmm. in general. What comes out, what doesn't, and whatnot. That's curious. Yeah. Um, so it's like, you know, I don't, I don't, I guess I don't know who, if I was to make a movie or something, if I could be, t- I probably wouldn't, if, especially if it's not something that fits their agenda or if it just, I guess I don't know how that works either, but I just found out that they actually have a budget for that. Yeah. Uh, which, you know, Hollywood does run America. 100%. Hollywood and the music industry does run America and definitely influence um, but yeah, that's fucking crazy. You know, it's because of that. Do you think that the agenda is to scare the American people? Like I said, like it's, I'm just speaking about how I feel personally, but I feel uneasy and, and I guess it's not just personally, but you know, America's not doing so great right now, but I just feel uneasy. Do you think that that could, that's the feeling that they want to push? Hollywood wants to push like I'm not sure if you know but among uh, the Gen Zers this prepper yeah, belief yeah it's very high right now well I fucking see it all over my fucking Instagram for some yeah. reason maybe it's because I you know I don't know uh it could be that or I think if you look at it optimistically I don't know I'm I don't know where I, I lie I mean I always think that shit's gonna go bad but you also have to see the light in some of this stuff where you know, if you always think that you're never going to enjoy your life, you're always going to be, you know, mm-hmm. in a place in your fucking house and never leave. But I don't know. It could also just be for attention, like for maybe to to be cautious and conscious about mm-hmm. everything and your surroundings and whatnot. Because, you know, if something was to arise, it's not going to arise in gonna rise in the most places that you don't expect it you know you'd be fucking shopping for this doing that yeah going for this going for groceries and that's where that's gonna happen it's not gonna happen in you know yeah i mean it probably will happen in government buildings but you know more of it it's gonna be towards innocent civilians Mm -hmm. unfortunately that's the way like i said war ensues um all right, so we covered a little bit of that civil war fallout and the chaos in the Middle East. The other thing that is fits coincides with this is immigration policy, or sorry, is border policy, security, securing our border policy, in particularly because of all of the again, uh, just to you know say it again, all of these conflicts that are happening in the Middle East that the U- United States is involved in is going to create backlash in one form of another. One of the biggest, one of the easiest ways to create that backlash is to use the people that are already in the United States. You know, it's more likely of an attack such as that, like we've seen in 9-11, than an attack like Pearl Harbor, where Japan flew from Japan all the way to Hawaii. Um, An attack is more likely to happen within than from without. And it brings us to the last topic, which is um, immigration policy. And we spoke about it in "Is America Failing?" Epi- in our "America Is America Failing?" episode, and particularly, I want to address the ones that Iowa just passed because Iowa, our, our governor Kim Reynolds, just passed one April 10. It's supposedly scheduled to hit July 1st, and there is. A tremendous amount of misinformation revolving this bill in particular with the social media and stuff like that i see that a lot of them are posting i see that a lot of them are posting a instagram post from aclu of iowa which i i look i went on their website and they do a lot of good work um so i like them for that reason but the statement from Mark Stringer, which is the Iowa executive director, 
He made a statement that today is a sad day for our state, Iowa, because Governor Kim Reynolds signed into law SF 2340, which is one of the most extreme, discriminatory, and unconstitutional anti-immigration bills in the country, and it's based on a Texas law that the courts have currently blocked. This law, which is set to take into effect July 1st, 2024, authorizes police to arrest people based on their federal immigration status and tells Iowa judges to order someone to be deported or jailed before they have an opportunity to seek humanitarian protection that they are entitled to. The Iowa law enforcement and state judges tasked with authority to carry out this outrageous law and not trained in immigration law and have no proper authority to enforce it, the law encourages and facilitates racial profiling and stereotyping. It undermines not promotes public safety and the rule of law. It will consume already strapped state court and law enforcement resources. This law is designed to wreak havoc in Iowa families and communities. It threatens Iowans who are citizens and not citizens alike. The way Iowa politicians who voted for this law are treating immigrants is heartless and out of touch with who we inspire to be as a state. Now, I want to dissect this statement because it's the one that the people around me are reposting. So he stated that it's one of the most extreme, discriminatory, and unconstitutional anti-immigration bills in this country. For starters, I am not a sheep. I look up oh, what the bill go. is. And it is seven pages. If you include the signing, it's eight pages. This is the one that uh, Kim Reynolds signed that says what it's about. It's an act relating to illegal reentry, illegal reentry into the state by certain aliens. Aliens is undocumented immigrants, or in other words, people who come in illegally, not through a port of entry. Prohibition on arrest in certain locations order to, in order to return to foreign nation, immunity from liability and identification for enforcement actions, sentencing restrictions, and providing penalties. So there's about six things that this bill is about, and I will explain them all and go into depth, not just make a statement which promotes um, misinformation. misinformation. So first thing... Um, is it one of the most extreme and it's based off of Texas law that the courts have currently blocked? Go ahead and we talk, we spoke about this on Is America Failing Us podcast. Go ahead and pop this up. First of all, this was from Greg Abbott to the United States government. Long story short, the states have a right to protect themselves if the government, the federal government fails to protect the state, especially if the state's self-defense clause in Article 1, Section 10, which provides that the state may defend itself when it has been invaded, actually invaded or in such imminent dangers as will not admit of delay. And the state does not need the consent of Congress to do so because Congress is failing the state. The invasion clause in Article uh, four, section four provides that the United States shall protect each state against invasion, which it's not mm -hmm. doing. The United States is not protecting our states, our border states. And what happens when illegal aliens entry the border states? They go all over the country, which is one of the reasons why I'm actually for this bill, because it protects Iowans against foreign aliens. Not only that, now... Mr. Mark Stringer of ACLU said that it was unconstitutional. What I just pulled up and said is part of the Constitution. I have the Constitution of the United States of America here. And we have Section 4, Article 4, Section 4. The United States shall guarantee to every state in this union a republic form of government and shall protect each of them against invasion and on application of 
legislature or the executive when the legislature cannot be convened against domestic violence. This is what the entire thing of Texas was about. Not only that, um, Texas referred to Arizona versus the government when Arizona filed a bill to defend itself against being invaded. Arizona won. It's constitutional for states to protect themselves against foreign invasion. So there's that misinformation that he said corrected. Not only that, um, it's, it's seek humanitarian protection that they are entitled to. I'm sorry, but criminals are not entitled to anything. If you enter the United States illegally, that is a crime. That is a misdemeanor. Not only that, this bill from Kim, from Kim Reynolds is an act relating to illegal re-entry. What is re-entry? It means you entered more, more than once. That's twice. That is an aggressive misdemeanor, which is what this bill pushes. It, it pushes people that leave, come back, or that were deported and come back. That is an aggressive misdemeanor. Um, and in reality, it's not unconstitutional it allows iowa to protect itself against people that we don't know as i stated earlier on average we know about 10 million or so of illegal aliens that are in the country within this administration that number is who knows 40 million 30 million well over that those are just estimations the problem with this that people seek you know, people look at this in uh they look at it with their heart, but fail to understand the dangers and implications of this, of these things going on is that we're, we're not tracking them. We don't take their biometrics, fingerprints, uh, blood or all that stuff. We don't take their picture. We're like, oh, you're here seeking asylum, even though you just crossed the border and didn't go through one of our ports of entry. All right. You know, asylum, you got it. Go into our country. This is where the problem arises. So, to correct this, uh, no, criminals are not entitled to humanitarian protection. There are criminals. If you seek asylum, that happens through the port of entry, which AOC is not, doesn't know what the fuck that shit is. Um, and not oh, only- Oh, that was, that was a great one when, uh, when she tried, who, who was that guy? Uh, so she was, that was just, against, just uh, yeah, ex ex ICE's top guy. Yeah. Yeah. Which he will explain, explain kind of what was going on with that. Yeah. So with that was that AOC, which is, a uh, uh, a dent, which, which is a Democrat. She was involved in a court hearing regarding ICE, ICE and the issues revolving caging children and separating the children from their families which if you guys are not aware, that was started by Barack Obama. Barack Obama made those cages and split families. Him and Joe Biden. Him and Joe Biden well before Trump did. Um, Trump just used and it. then Trump just, you know, continued that policy. So it started with Barack Obama. And this got traction around Trump's, um, Trump's um, yeah. you know, yeah. government. And she said, why are they splitting families and you know, they're seeking asylum. And he basically said, the way you seek asylum is through the port of entry, mm -hmm. not crossing the border. Yep. Crossing the border is illegal. Not only that, we split families for the same reason that we split a family. If a guy is caught with a DUI and he has a kid, we split that family up, send the guy to jail, and we put the kid in protective custodies. So to give an analogy, so there's that. And... So there's that. So again, criminal criminals are not entitled to that stuff. Not only that, but there's nothing in here that is against humanitarians, against the constitution. Um, and one thing, one thing that I will say though, is that this is discriminatory. It's discriminatory against Americans that are left vulnerable left without funds you know we're here funding all these illegal aliens coming in and americans are left to be fed to the wolves like always what do you say to people that 
are trying to protect that because of I don't know their more their their most uneducated view of just making an excuse that let's see who how are you gonna find cheap labor? The thing is, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, like you know, it's a the the thing is that we need immigrants in America. Immigrants was literally. America was literally made by immigrants. It's it's we literally migrated from Europe to America. Not only that, but America is built by immigrants. So, saying that we need cheap labor like that, are you really going to demean our immigration, our our immig yeah our uh, our immigration population like that? So we need immigrants, but why are you going to demean their abilities to cheap labor? You know, or is that really how you're looking at it? That all all immigrants are good for is cheap labor, which if you guys don't know, we come from immigrant parents. They just did it the legal way is the thing. Um, yeah, I think that's bullshit. And it all starts with, you know, people's view about immigration is. It all starts with emotions. That's what it starts with. Yeah. It doesn't start with anything else besides emotions because obviously, you know, I we've been through the whole thing of, you know, your parents are illegal here and you get scared of a cop being behind you or someone knocking on the door and it being a cop or this and that. So it all comes with all those mixed emotions, but that's the bad thing that it gets, those emotions get mixed into what, you know, the reality is. Mm -hmm. And the reality of it is that I can guarantee you 90% of this type of content, this social media content, uh, not that there's anything bad with it, not that I have anything against uh, ACLU of Iowa, because I like the work that they do. They do a lot of good work for communities. The thing is that it promotes ignorance because... The thing is that they fucking create a little post that anyone can share and spread misinformation like yes. which is one of the actually causes of, the, the, the the best and easy way that causes political unrest is back in 2009 when facebook was popular uh you know that was the concern of misinformation and people were like oh no it's not you know it's not that bad and then it fucking rose within five mm -hmm. five years just boom uh, misinformation and political you know different political you know mm -hmm. political parties creating all these accounts that are just proposing which happens on the left and happens on the right it, yeah. it happens everywhere mm -hmm. you know and it gets you all riled up like what the fuck bro <sighs> fuck this you know i'm gonna you know and it gets you all rage up so like understanding that you know they're gonna play that game and that's what like that, that's the game they're playing the, yeah, you know, I, I, game. I 100 percent agree with you. And the thing is that this thing that was filed is easily accessible. Go to www.legis.iowa.gov, type in SF2340. You find this bill. It's seven pages. Quit being cheap. Read it. It's a 10 minute read. And if you look through everything and do your research and cross references, it's about 30 minutes. For something that, you know, the if, if you're passionate about this stuff, if you're passionate about protection, if you're passionate about or if you're scared, if you're scared and you think that it's going to hurt you or your families or stuff like that, read it. It's well, very simple to do that. It, it's simple and it's easy for you to say that, but you probably lost everyone that should be actually paying attention to this or that shared this post, so. That's fine, you know. We live in a world of sheeps. We live in a nation of sheeps, and that's okay. I'm not going to be part of it. Um, but real quick, you know, there's 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 that misinformation going on. I kind of wanted to address that side of the things. Now I will help you get a basis to this bill. Now, um, and again, I have it in front of me. Seven pages is what it is. So the Senate file focuses on six things. Again, I already read it. Illegal re-entry into the state by certain aliens. Two, uh, prohibition on arrest and, cre and certain locations. Three, orders to return to a foreign nation. Four, immunity from liability and identification for enforcement actions. 
five sentencing restrictions and six providing penalties. That's that's what the bill is about. Um, so again, that was that. Uh, section one of this bill is definitions like port of entry, aliens, what all these things means. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. Section two through five is the bill regarding aliens and how to punish them and who's punishable. For example, uh, illegal reentry into the state by certain aliens. Again, reentry, entering more than once is uh, aggressive misdemeanor. That is punishable for up to two years in jail and deportation. Not even, and then it also covers like what happens if you are, what happens if you already created a penalty, a uh, 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 penalty, uh, penalty, and then you get caught. You know, but that mm -hmm. its penalty is higher for those things. Section six through ten are legalities that protect organizations. For example, for example, let's say a cop stops someone that's undocumented and they proceed about the case injusticely to the illegal immigrant injusticely and that illegal immigrant is now entitled to compensation it just protects the institution like the police or labor for even even labor forces so for example if a contractor tells on you know the people that he's worked that are mm -hmm. that he has worked with. It protects them against litigation. So, for example, if they get sued and they pay and they have to provide compensation to the illegal immigrants that were treated unjustly, the state will come into effect and compensate them because of this bill. So it protects organizations and contractors uh, that are just doing their job according to this bill to remove illegal aliens from here. Um, that is what that is about. And then that's pretty much it. And that's pretty much it. Now, section two through five regarding all of these things. Um, it, it, it also provides grounds on where you can't punish illegal aliens, such as you can't deport or you can't obtain anybody in public or primary secondary schools for educational purposes you can't capture anybody in a church synagogue or other establishments of religious worship uh, at hospitals or healthcare facilities so it gives orders for all of these things now not only that um iowa's resources in particular to the police departments and all these things they're low and so they've already came out with statements saying that we're not going to go door to door knocking looking for all of these things they it's never do it, correct it's they more do. it's more along the lines of if you are caught you know if you if you are caught um you know let's just say reckless driving and you don't have identification you know you're going to be put in jail and then investigated not only that but if you already have pending federal cases they can't do anything to you because it's pending federal approval. If you don't have anything like that, such as illegal aliens coming through that have not been, you know, documented, they don't have their biometrics or anything like that, um, you're in trouble. Not only that, there is some implication. So if they catch you and you don't have and you don't have um, um, IDs or you haven't you don't have your biometrics on a file, they will, you have to agree to take them down to, you know, give your DNA, give your, mm -hmm. uh, your thumbprints, give your address, give all of your information, and then to have a case created against you. That way you can be able to fight it and, you know, treat it according to the courts of law. And if you deny all of these things, if, if you deny this bill, you basically, you're fucked and you, you get sent home. But it's, it's not, like I said, like this guy says, it's not, he, he also says the law encourages and facilitates racial profiling and stereotyping, misinformation. There's nothing in this law that encourages the law to facilitate racial profiling and stereotyping. Nothing in this law. So enable your critical thinking and leave behind this egocentric view behind of emotions and just... <laughs> 10 minute read, 10 minute read, 30 minute investigation. I'd rather be and on TikTok. You're good to go. I'd rather be on TikTok. So 
I want to address that because it protects Iowans. This bill protects Iowans against people that are that are not registered Fucking under you and I. Protects us against you and I. So, again, why why does this all tie together? Why am I fucking bringing up Kim Reynolds' bill when we talked about the context in the Middle East? Is because the United States is that threat of imminent danger of uh, attack, and it's gonna happen from within, and it's gonna happen from those from sleeper cells. Iowa is also vulnerable to it, so it's a good thing that Iowa has some sort of a protection. For its citizens. For itself, because we don't get protected by the swamp. By the swamp. By Sleepy Joe. But there's that. So, that's all I got for you, though, boss. Unless you got something else to add to that. No, um, like I said, not done with the book. I really want to read the book. I'm actually going to try to reach out to her and whatnot. And uh, we can bring up civil wars in a different time. Uh it's more than complicated than it actually seems. And it's, I mean, I covered it a little bit, but uh, it surprised me how, not saying how close we are to one, but how it seems that we could have one, you know? Mm. So, I don't know. It It's all because of weak power, though, you know? Definitely. Like, it's, it's all because of weak power. Uh, Yeah, it's just, you know. And a soft nation. It's soft nation. Uh, What's that one quote that I like? Hard man, hard men create good times. Good times create weak men. Weak men, weak men create hard times. Mm-hmm. Well said, boss. Um, I did want to read something from her. Uh, Just to end it. End it. Um, uh, It says... Most Americans cannot imagine another civil war in their country. They assume our democracy is too resilient, too robust, too devolve into conflict. Or they assume that our country is too wealthy and advanced to turn on itself. We have trusted for too long, perhaps, that peace will always prevail. Mm. So it's just like, I don't know. I think great words. I think Um, we're too... Yeah. Great words. Uh, something to add to that. Uh, prepare, prepare for the worst. You know, hope for the best. Prepare for the worst. Stock up. You know, don't think that. Like that, like you just said, don't think that we're protected by some special energy just because we live in the greatest country in the world. Uh, s- just stock up. You know, maybe have a little bit of water on hand, a little bit of extra food on hand, and have a plan. Because the way things are looking, it's not good. Well, that's it for today, Intellects. Thank you guys for tuning in. This was, again, just um, raising awareness to current affairs that have been going on within you know, f- the last five days, last day, last night. And we will be covering this into depth with better accuracy in our information. So thank you guys a lot. Intellects. Out. Thank you guys.